Welcome back, my beautiful family. Let's get into 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After. We're back with Nicole and Mahmoud. In the last episode, Nicole told Mahmoud if he was going to act like a little womanizer, he can go back to Egypt. Now, I never saw Mahmoud stop dead in his tracks like she claimed that he did, but with editing, who knows? What I do wish uh, is that he would give me the attention that I felt like he gave her. This girl is a cyborg. She reminds me of Nebula, or she looks like a McKee from Halo. So after he walks off, Nicole gives him a call and he says, I'm not coming back. And she's like, why? And he goes, I left everything to be here with you and you're giving me crap over something I didn't even do. Dude, if you want like Arab women, then that's what you should do. You should go well, back to Egypt. Yeah, it, I, it, I saw it, the it, whole it, thing. It, 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 it. He's like, this is crazy the way that you're treating me. I'm not gonna deal with this. Okay, well don't oh, no. then, that's okay. Then she tells him, well, you're not just gonna walk around the city on your own. Like, what is wrong with her? She totally vacillates from being pissed and disgusted with him to chasing him down and wanting him back. So they get back together and she asks him again why he left and he repeats the same exact thing. Well, okay. Oh, well, yeah, if you want an Arab woman, you should go get one. Like, well, She's like, I saw you ogling her, Mahmoud. I was right there. I okay. never did that and you just so. seen this on your mind, so it's not my problem okay. now. He's looking pretty mad to me. I know we already know about his DV charge. Apparently Nicole dropped all the charges, but I have a feeling they're still together. I have my wife walk beside me and talk to a different woman. This is the most true thing you can do. Oh my gosh. As a woman, when I am out in public, there is nothing, nothing I hate more than when I am out and there is a man with his wife or even worse, his children, and he's checking me out right in front of them. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I feel bad and embarrassed for the woman that her partner is such a scumbag and I'm angry towards him. So Mahmoud is right. It is extremely rude. <laughs> Don't do it. Mahmoud tells us he was a little taken aback seeing a woman with the hijab out on the pier but they get back in the car and continue the same conversation. He says, I want to be here. I came here for you. She's like, I love you, Mahmoud. And you're not even happy being here. So maybe I saw her as a symbol, what you do want. Nicole tells us that she understands what it's like being in a totally different environment. And she's going to support him and help him through it because they have to make it work. <laughs> We're going to make this work. We have to make this work. It's our last shot. <sighs> Why do you have to make it work? You guys are so much happier when you're not together. These two are like the most miserable couple on here. I'm honestly shocked that they're back on another season. It's like torture. It's a new day. Nicole is playing with string while having the exact same conversation. When you saw that uh, girl, got this sense that um, you want a traditional Muslim woman. She's like, Mahmoud, I know you want me covered up head to toe, but I will never be that girl. I like who I am now. Then you shouldn't have converted, Nicole. This man lives and breathes his Muslim faith. I know that I'll never be who Mahmoud wants me to be. I'm trying to respect my own self and my own identity. He's like, um, well, I still want you to cover up, Nicole. It's very important to me. This is how I was raised and that's what makes me comfortable. She's like, well, I don't want to have to get permission to wear what I want to wear. This was them the entire last season. This stupid crossroad about what she can and can't wear. And this is part of my religion. It's not me doing, like, try to be like, oh, I'm the man here. Nicole is speechless. She doesn't understand how serious his faith is. Then she tells us that he would have married her if she didn't convert. No, he wouldn't have. He would not have married a woman who isn't Muslim. There are Muslims that marry outside of their faith, but Mahmoud is not 
one of them. It's what I couldn't couldn't do as an individual. I wasn't gonna follow every single rule for Mahmoud. She's like, he can do whatever he wants and I will respect him, but I just ask for the same treatment. And he's like, okay, Nicole, I'll give it a shot. If I can't, this will be hard to be here. I have to give credit where it's due, okay? Despite him being a total loser, it does look like he is trying. And I don't think he would be trying if he didn't love her. Mahmoud tells us that he thought they had an understanding. Now that he's here, he feels like she completely flipped the script on him. So Nicole finishes doing her makeup because she's planned for them to get together with her friends later. And she steps out in a form-fitting dress and it has some open backing where the, the buttons are pleated and you can see her back. He accused me of being immodest and now he's refusing to talk to me. Wow, what a shocker. She's like, seriously, Mahmoud, you're not gonna go? And he's like, no, Nicole, please just go. She didn't give me time to accept her way here. It's like, is my way or not ever? So Nicole is like, Mahmoud, everyone is looking forward to meeting you. Please, you should really keep your plans. We agreed to go, and now you don't want to go, all because a little piece of my back is showing? Yes. That's what the issue is? Yes. She's like, Mahmoud, this is my home. You're acting crazy. And he's like, okay, well, why not just be naked then? Yes, like, I can, I can wear not. whatever like, I want I'm, in my own I'm house. Like, okay, so you can, okay, I'm done. You hey, Nicole, I have some shocking and insightful wisdom. If you love Mahmoud and you want your marriage to work, then cover up. If you can't cover up, then break up. She's like, this is exactly what was happening in Egypt. No, really, Nicole? We hadn't noticed. Mahmoud's like, okay, Nicole, we will get a divorce then. So Nicole goes to dinner by herself. Honestly, I thought she looked really cute. That dress is darling. Okay, let's move on to these losers. Have you heard that now Sophie has an OF? My soul is starving for substance. I don't even want to cover them anymore. So let's just speed run through these clowns. Sophie is hanging out with her girlfriends by the pool. If you don't remember in the last episode, she told Rob her best friend from England is coming and she wants them to meet. Now, Originally, she told us that he was already coming to America and she asked him to stop by and see her. But now she's telling her friends that she asked him to make a trip to America. I was like, come to Austin, like I'm here. So True. like, Callum, do you think he still has a crush on you? I'm sure oh. you're that big. <laughs> you think, oh my gosh, you think there's the possibility that he still might be into you and you asked him to come and visit? She's making it easier and easier to defend Rob the Knob. And it's, it's like messing with me. So Rob shows up, he gets introduced to everyone. Everyone is trying to be cordial. Sophie has already asked them to please be on their best behavior because she knows none of her friends like him. Why is that? Cause all she does is talk trash about him. Then she's like, oh, but I do love him and I want it to work out. So please be nice. What an idiot. Honestly, this is the last thing that I want to be doing right now. I know that her girlfriends are going to be judging me. Besides Sophie's friends, he's also really pissed that this dude is traveling so far to visit his wife. That is weird as hell. I'm here for Sophie to show her that I'm willing to do the things that she's asking me to do. Sophie's friend is like, so Rob, I want to hear from your perspective what the relationship has been like for you. And he took ownership of his actions and said he wasn't doing enough for her and he was basically treating her like crap. I'm trying to show Sophie that I love her by doing things that are outside of my comfort zone. I gotta meet some dude who I don't wanna meet. Why? And the girls are like, oh, what? She can't have any friends. All of these girls are single, I promise. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if all of them had an OF or were trying to start one. This girl took every single opportunity she could to have her butt angled towards the camera, okay? This is not a coincidence. And my whole point is, Sophie is getting trash advice 
from her shallow friends, okay? If you want marriage advice, go ask somebody who has a successful marriage. It's, you can it, be I'm gonna be honest with you. I've had exes in the past. The guy they were with after me was the guy best friend. Rob's like, it really messed with me and it's difficult for me to accept. Sophie's like, well, don't put that on me. I didn't do anything wrong. Her friend is like, maybe you're just jealous or insecure. And he's like, look, you can, you can analyze me however you want to, but I am here to meet the guy, okay? And then he walks in and my initial gut reaction was like, oh, he's gay. Like, <laughs> no shade. That was just the first impression that I got. Um, he's not, he's not gay. Um, he's not my type. Rob is like, hell no. Oh, hell no. Nah. He could have been a lot of any old type of look, but he's that look, some hot dude. Sophie jumps up and gives him a hug. And rather than sitting next to Rob, who is extremely uncomfortable with this entire thing, she sits next to Callum. Boiling over of how much I can take. No, Sophie's beautiful. And I don't believe that he's not attracted to her for one second. Things go from bad to worse. When Callum asks Sophie if she remembers how wonderful their trip to Portugal was, Rob's like, oh, you guys went to Portugal together? And he's like, yeah, we had so much fun. And then he tells Rob that they used to date. I mean, we dated for a short amount of time when we were like, very first met when we were in Portugal. Perfect, Sophie. Perfect. You have created for yourself the perfect storm. You freaking bimbo. You should have told me that. I mean, I was like a child. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, like, everyone's don't make that a thing. Now. You know like, what I'm saying? Rob? Past it. Rob's like, it probably would have been easier for me to deal with if I had known. You're not going to tell me that you guys dated that you found him attractive and that she lied to me. So then Sophie in her brilliance recognizes that Rob is upset. So she finally gets up to go and sit by him. The friends are just watching like, oh, were they purposely, I'm really wondering, were they purposely trying to get him to snap so that then they could say, see Sophie, he's a freaking loser. You gotta leave him. I mean, I don't know. Give him a break. So Rob gets up, goes to the bathroom, and Callum says to Sophie, I can't believe you didn't tell him. And Sophie's like, oh yeah, that's why he's acting so weird. Gee, you think, Sophie? Man, this girl, she better keep her hair blonde forever. It just makes me feel like she don't give a about me. Hey, Sophie, I'm going to talk to you. So they go off. And that is where we leave with these two. Moving on, we are with Kobe. He's at the barber's getting his hair re-twisted. He said he wants to start dreads. His buddies arrive and they're all super excited to see each other. Kobe's like, I know, I've been away from home for so long. I feel like that was the best decision I ever made. Like, we are here today, we got two beautiful kids and we're happy. His friend is like, so are you going to settle down in Cameroon or what? And Kobe's like, no, I don't think it would be easy for us to settle down in Cameroon. It's your wife, it's no. your married. Trust me. Because I know, I know our culture are very different. I really, really do not like this friend. I think it is absolutely disgusting to ever, ever undermine somebody's marriage. Unless there is abuse going on, you should only ever be an encouragement. Then this buffoon asks, is Emily naggy? What difference does it make to you? Huh? It's not your wife. Kobe just said that he was happy. So leave him alone. She always want to take the lead, you know, and I understand that this is who she is. Some of the negativity in our, in our relationship, but- and his friend's like, how are you gonna deal with that? How are you gonna cope? And Kobe's like, I already am. It's a partnership, so we into this together. It's not like I and uh, Alucius were trying to discourage you. Don't give me that crap, okay? You are absolutely trying 
to discourage him, you friggin' troll. He's like, oh yeah, when I get home from work, my favorite food is hot and waiting for me, and then my wife makes me a bath. Toby's like, dang dude, I wish my friends would understand that I live in America now. And yes, Emily is extremely bossy and super annoying, but if he's happy, then who cares? Let him be happy. Emily, and I don't expect her to change, but I'm really hoping that Emily will give a good impression. Then Valerie, yeah, Valerie, okay? He has a woman's name. Hey, Mr. Macho, how does it feel having a pretty little girl's name, hmm? He's like, you know, Kobe, when our people move, there's at least a 90% chance that they're not happy and they will come back and get an African wife. All right, thank you guys. I mean, you all should be wishing for me to, you know, be happy. Thank you, Kobe. <sighs> he's the best, okay? He's standing up for his marriage, his wife. He's putting his friends in their place. Emily, you better show up and impress that entire freaking family. I don't care if you have to bite your tongue for a full 36 hours to pull it together. Make it happen. So later that day, Kobe takes Emily out on a date. Oh wow, you're gonna get the chair too? Of course, come on. Wow, who is this guy I'm on a date with? Emily's like, I know you were so excited to get your hair done, how did it go? And he's like, it went great. My friend showed up, we had a nice time. How was your day? And she's like, well, you know, I was stuck in the hotel with the kids. We didn't have the car. You were gone all day. So, you know, she was pleasant about it. I wanna do family things. I wanna go experience it with him. I don't wanna be left in the hotel. Then there brought this appetizer and I don't know what it was, but it looked like steak with onion. And one of my most favorite things to eat is a nice, juicy, tender, rare steak with some raw onion. The flavors come together to create a panorama experience in your mouth. Emily takes a bite and she's like, there's a lot of pepper in here. You can chew that from now to, till we get back to the hotel. I got it. You swallow it? He is just so happy and jolly. I love it. It's infectious. You can't help but smile. Like, I want to go on a double date with these two. And then Emily's like, Kobe, you need to lay the napkin across. No, not like that. Like, don't do it like that. And he's like, gosh, man. She's like, what happened at the barber shop? Honestly, this entire scene looked very, very staged to me. He's like, you know, guy stuff. And she's like, well, come on, tell me, I'm your wife. He's like, okay. They wanted to know what life was like in the US. And she's like, oh, well, what did you say? Concern, like my friends do have. So do your friends like not like me or they like have something against me or what? And he's like, no, it's not about you. It's just that growing up, we all imagined living here, being married to an African woman and building a family here. So they were just shocked that I married a white woman because in the long run, getting married to a bossy girl leads to disaster. Freaking guys getting married to like white bossy girls and then at the long run, goes crazy and then... Too much honesty, too much, you gotta rein it in. He's like, they think in the long run, we will be very unhappy together. What? Emily's like, I'm not bossy. I just get things done. And Kobe's like, well, you want everything done your way. By me, you're kind of like bossy and that's true. Like, you, you want somewhere. everything to be done in your way. I No. He's like, my friends are just looking out for my best interests. They want me to be happy. And she's like, but you are happy. And he goes, of course, of course. And she's like, wait, are you just saying that to make me happy? And he's like, no, babe, I defended you the entire time. I feel like maybe your friends got in your head and you're acting like a little strange. Get in my head when I was defending you the whole time. Yes, I knew we were gonna get some good drama from these two. She's like, uh, why is this conversation exploding right now? And Kobe's like, I don't know. I am totally confused. 
She's like, I don't get it either. I feel like we're both confused. The way Kobe is talking is a little concerning, putting all of these doubts in his head that he never had before. And that is where we left off with these two. Let's move on to the Mucinex man and his female counterpart. Their segment was short. It's the 4th of July and the whole family has come together to celebrate. I want my family to spend time with Ed's family. I just really want my family to see what I see in Ed. Liz is very concerned that Ed might get upset with her mother when she attempts to talk to him. Ed does not think before he says anything and he's very impulsive. Ed tells us that his communication with Liz's grandparents has been very good. However, he hasn't talked much to Liz's mom and has no idea what she feels regarding them getting married. It did take me a while to, to earn Liz's trust back and it's probably gonna take me a lot longer to earn the mom's. Liz's grandparents and Ed's mother meet each other for the first time. Ed is so happy to have his mother back in his life. And then Liz's mom creeps up on Ed and is like, is there some place we can go and talk? He's like, okay, I was just getting my food, lady. I'm doing good. Yeah, you sure about that? Oh, I'm very sure. She's like, you seem to get very tense when I'm around. And he's like, ow, I do. He's like, big time. Ed is like, look, I know I've given everyone a very good reason to dislike me. I haven't been in a committed relationship in 30 years. And then here's this beautiful young woman that likes me. He's like, I'm just so insecure. I can't accept her love. I find ways to push her away. But then we went to therapy. We don't ever go to the end of the driveway without turning around and saying, I, I love you. And Liz's mom is like, Ed, I like you. I like your personality. I've seen a lot of change in you, but there's still a lot to do. They can make this work as long as they stay on the path they're on. So they hug, it's nice, but it doesn't matter because we already know that these two don't work out, okay? Finally, we're with Gino and Jasmine. Has anybody noticed that I don't cover Manuel and Ashley? I haven't seen any comments about those two, but yeah, I'm not covering them. I just wanted to say that my husband watched like 30 seconds of their segment and was 100% certain that Manuel is using her for a green card. I tried to play devil's advocate. <laughs> I was trying to play devil's advocate a little bit and defend Ashley and he was like, no. He is absolutely 100% using her. But anyways, on to these two morons. Jasmine is at FedEx or whatever to send her kids some toys and crap. She's still broken hearted over the fact that Gina won't shell out five grand for her kids to come to America. I guess she doesn't have enough members on her OnlyFans to pay for her own children. Gino is ignoring me. Gino doesn't understand how much I need him. Michelle shows up with more toys and goodies to send to the kids. And then Jasmine tells us that Michelle is her best friend in America. She's explaining to Michelle what has her so upset that Gino didn't put the kid's name on any of the paperwork. So now it could take up to two years before they come to America. And you guys, I'm just recapping what happened in this episode, but I have to remind all of you that I don't believe any of this is true. I think it's just a made up storyline. I think their scenes are an absolute waste of our time. So let's keep watching. From no, zero, no, no, it's a no. whole new freaking process. Can take as long as two years. Get a lawyer. Jasmine's like, he doesn't want to. It's so expensive. And Michelle's like, I don't care. Jasmine starts ugly crying again, saying, I just want to get on the next plane to Panama. I am so depressed. Michelle's in tears about poor Jasmine's predicament. She said she would be devastated if Jasmine left and went back to Panama. Yeah, sure. I don't want to see you go. I understand why you have the feelings. I could have a talk with them. And Jasmine's like, Oh no, I don't want you to feel like you have to do that, Michelle. And Michelle says, I don't feel pressured. You're my family now, Jasmine. I want you to be happy. I want you to have what you want. Jasmine's like, I'm in one of the worst dilemmas in my entire life. It is such a relief to have Michelle's support. By the way, you can support me too by signing up for my I feel very sad that we've made a mistake on the paperwork. Um, who is we, Gino? You made the mistake, Mr. Google. He's like, 
I don't feel great about how ungrateful Jasmine has been about the entire situation. What do you mean? You didn't hire a lawyer to bring her to America, and I would argue you purposely omitted the children's names on the paperwork because you knew that would get Jasmine to America faster. Dana tells us that he was hoping to spend some time with Gino to knock some sense into him. Even this guy knows that Gino is trying to save a buck at the expense of the children and Jasmine, and it could easily destroy their relationship. Trying to save some money has probably ended up costing him his relationship with Jasmine. Dana says to Gino, I can't imagine going two years without seeing my kids. And Gino's like, yeah, I feel bad, but they're her kids and she should be responsible for them. I don't feel like she appreciates what I did to this point. And I've done a lot for her. Yeah. I got her to this, this country. Dana totally ignores all of Gino's whining and says again that two years for a young child is huge. A kid's mentality at 11 years old is totally different than 13, and it's not fair to Jasmine to miss out on that. Dana's like, Gino, don't you think Jasmine will be missing out on an important piece of her children's lives? It takes eight months anyway, even if you do it right, to get... Kids. Forget about all that. What do you do now? And Gino's like, also, it's gonna cost me $5,000. And Dana's like, hold up, dude. You don't have five grand? Gino's like, no, I spent enough on the wedding, which means he does have five grand, he just doesn't want to fork it over. Someone in the comments section said that Gino made a buttload of money on crypto, like 650 grand. I don't know if that's true. Either way, I think Gino is just a total tightwad, and when it comes to your partner, that is very selfish. There's certain things that, that you want to spend money on in life. Getting her kids over here is one of them. Dana says to Gino that his wife told him Jasmine was seriously, for reals, considering going back to Panama. And Gino's like, yeah, she always says she's going back to Panama. I mean, he's not wrong. But I think she's serious now, Gino. She can't wait that long to see her kids. You guys, I think this is the writers preparing us all for Jasmine and Gino to split. Dana is just regurgitating lines that he was told to speak so that it looks like Jasmine has a totally legitimate reason to leave this relationship. Gino's like, how can she just throw away our relationship because of this one thing? I don't think it has got as much to do with you as it does with her missing her kids. Gino tells us that if Jasmine was going to go back to Panama right now, her entire visa would be null and void. And the entire process that Gino had worked so hard on would be for nothing. That would be devastating. And it would be like the end of the world for me. It's a new day. And Gino and Jasmine are on their way to check out the wedding photos they had taken. Generations can look at and be like, this was their wedding day. Mm -hmm. like, this is what they looked like in that moment. I this love it. Gonna tell a complete story of your day. Or it will serve as a hideous reminder that this clown couple was on way too many seasons of 90 Day Fiance, creating a bunch of memes and retarded drama. I was so happy that day, so happy. Lately, I feel anxious, a lot of stress. Jasmine tells us that this issue with her kids is causing her immense stress. And whenever that happens, her alopecia gets worse. And right now, she is losing her hair more than ever. I really hope that by Gino looking at our wedding pictures, he will remember the vows, the promises. Jasmine says she doesn't feel appreciated, she doesn't feel loved. Then she starts breaking down as she's looking at the photos and ends up leaving. She tells us that she feels like an absolute failure and is prepared to divorce Gino and go back to Panama, even if that means breaking her children's hearts about moving to America. Everything that I promised to my children, just to tell them it's not gonna happen, you're not moving. In the next episode, Thais and Patrick go to Brazil to introduce her family to their baby, and John invites himself. Good idea to check it out. You know, spend more time with my brother a little bit. He's saying... I'm just saying. I mean, I guess he wants to go to Brazil. Kobe's loser friend gives him more heat about being married to a white lady. Nicole, the wisest cast member we've got, 
brings all of her friends back to the apartment after having this fight with Mahmoud. I am a little worried about how, how he's going to act. Hi, Hi Mahmoud! And Rob and Sophie get into a screaming match. Thankfully, her ex-boyfriend comes to the rescue. I'm sure that will help. Hit that join button to get access to members-only videos and let me know what y'all think about these couples. Let me know what you think about this season in the comment section below. I love you and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Pop. Pull up, pop up, then I'll the pop.